welcome to this episode of Spotlight on the Art. I am Johnny Miranda. And I'm Deb Sutherland. Hi. And we're your hosts today representing the Chicopee Cultural Council. Today we're going to talk about flowers. Flowers, flowers, flowers. Flowers and community gardens. Today we are joined by Kim Morissette. She is one of the volunteers in the community garden committee hosted by the Parks and Recreations Department. And we want to learn about how you, the audience, can get involved in these community projects, specifically the community gardens. We would like to have more flowers. Flowers and paintings and murals and any ideas that you might have that will enrich the garden and bring the community in. And just it'll be, it'll be a thing people want to go to to look at and see and join. Yeah. So the Cultural Council obviously wants to get involved in anything that involves beautification of our community. And the community gardens are no exception. That's why we have today Kim Morissette. Thank you for joining us, Kim. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Thank it's so nice to have you. And, and we are curious to know many things about the community gardens. Uh, tell us about this particular committee that you're a part of, housed under the Parks and Recreations Department. Tell us a little bit about it. Certainly. Well, I'm a, a volunteer committee member for the Chicopee Community Garden. The Chicopee Community Garden is at Lincoln Grove Park. It is a um, it is 19 beds along with two raised beds to um, serve our disabled population. Um, we came about in about 2015. Um, it was a grant that we had received from Harvard Pilgrim for $5,000, which enabled us to build the garden that you see today. That's wonderful, and I've seen some photos. How big are those beds? They're something by eight, or they're, they're, they're nice sized beds. You could. They are, they are, they're 19 by, 12 by eight, I believe. 12 by eight, very nice. And, and those beds are able to be leased out by the community members? They are. Uh, tell us about the availability, how much they yes. cost, and how can people Reach. contact you? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. So to lease out a plot for the growing season, it's, t it's $25. And you can find that application at the Parks and Recreation Department and um, payable to the city of Chicopee. And I also want to stress that no resident is turned away for inability to pay. Um, folks will often ask, you know, what is the $25 fee going toward? And it goes towards topsoil, any repairs, fertilizer, and then also a fund for those who perhaps may not be able to afford the $25 lease fee. Well, I am just overwhelmed. What a wonderful community project. It, it, it feeds the community, it beautifies the community. We're not going to give any, if you want to plant and you don't have the money, you can have food, you can feed your families. It just reaches out to the community in beauty and, and it's beautiful. This past month, actually, on April 17th, um, the committee was able to host at the Lincoln Grove Park Community Garden a cleanup, right? Tell us about how that went. I, I was a part of it, but I'd love to hear your perspective on it. Absolutely. So twice a year we have volunteer opportunities. And if you are a grower um, for the season, we do ask that you attend these, these two volunteer opportunities. And we welcome the community to assist us as well, too. And what we typically do on a Saturday in April is we, we call it our spring spruce up. And we spruce up the garden. We spruce up the, the plots. We typically will add fertilizer topsoil if we need it, we'll remulch the area, trim down any weeds and just spruce it up and basically just, you know, create that blank canvas for the year. And then come October, we will typically have another sort of cleanup day and that is to winterize the garden, prepare for the winter months so that it's ready again for spring. And um, so the Cultural Council has indirectly gotten involved with the community garden through this project that I put up uh, a grant for. And it is to beautify the garden, but this time, this project this summer is going to be uh, to create community garden art with the youth in the community and also to plant uh, a few beds to create food sustainability in what is denominated to be food deserts, right? So the area around Lincoln Grove Park has been denominated a food desert, meaning that there are no supermarkets necessarily close by, no access to fresh food uh, close by. How important has food accessibility and food security been to the development of, the, of this project? 
So, you know, absolutely. So the, the, the vision of the community garden project and the committee has always been to have a community garden in every park within the city. And the vision being that, you know, first and foremost, to address food insecurity amongst our neighbors and to provide that green space to all Chicopee residents in a meaningful and dignified way. Um, do you find a lot of the children are, are also participating in this so that rather than just in the store when they see the produce packaged ready in the store they have an idea of where it comes from and, and growing it? And oh yes absolutely and I love to see that I love when I stop in and I see growers and I see they're, they're with their families or their children or even if I happen to be in the garden in this space and, and there's a beautiful spray park right behind the space and, and the children will come over and they'll ask you know what are you doing miss and I'll explain what it is and what we're doing and it's just it's it's lovely and they embrace it and it's it's wonderful to see. Lincoln Grove is one of the most uh, vibrant parks mm. in Chigabee. Um, so it has a skate park, it has open field, it has a water park now, it has the community garden and you see kids running around all the time when you're working in the community garden they approach you and and they'll get curious about what you're planting and that's part of the project that we're hosting um, over the summer to, to, to feed that curiosity. I think that we need to make kids and the youth curious about these type of projects that are serving uh, a benefit to the community in general. That was like a pun. You said you were feeding their curiosity. <laughs> feeding their curiosity. There you go. <laughs> Definitely no pun intended, it's, but it it's was. Excellent role model. <laughs> it, it, yes. it means everything. Do but you garden in your personal life? I do. Tell me about that. Tell I us do. about that. So I, I love to garden. I, I absolutely love flowers. Um, you know, I've been known when I have the space to have, you know, big flourishing gardens, all different types of vegetables, tomatoes, peppers, squash, zucchini, um, to name a few. And then I, I love flowers. Um, right now I have some peonies that are going to be coming up. I've had daffodils, tulips. I have some morning glories on the way lilies um, and probably my absolute favorite well my absolute favorite has to be the calla lily because my daughter is named calla so you know oh, so yes. so that's befitting however hydrangeas i absolutely love hydrangeas they're my absolute favorite can't get enough of them and uh, you know i have a good plenty I in my space coming, right now i always said i was coming back to life as a dahlia for the longest time Those are beautiful. but uh, I, I, that keeps changing the, the well, favorite flowers that, Do you have that, a favorite flower? <laughs> i love roses but i will mm. say roses because my mom's name is rosa so oh. you know mm. i love roses because of that beautiful when you said dahlia that there's a scary movie that is about <laughs> dahlias right Black oh, dahlia or yes, something. i yes, think so <laughs> mostly they're wonderful i just love i just i they're so beautiful. adore fla i do just flower gardening um, in my home. And um, I was thinking about flowers because we were going to do this today. And I was thinking about flowers and flowers are perhaps top of the list for pervasive things in our lives. We use them for happy times and sad times and babies and funerals and, and, and um, they're in our fashions, they're at our ears, they're on our clothes, they're in our homes. They're, they're, they're prolific. They're, they're, it, we, how much we as a, as a species love and worship and put flowers in front of us. I, and, and the form, the beauty, the color, the fragrance, they, I just think they embody all so of the good energies you, of the world. You sure mentioned do. you have a, a garden as well in your home. What type of flowers do you plant them? Well, right back here. Um, <laughs> this is the spring flowers, and I think I have almost every one of them in, in my home over, over time. But, you know, some true geraniums, lots of bleeding yes. hearts and lilacs are just out and all the flowering trees. And, the, and then I have to say that over the 10 or 15 years, uh, your perennial garden gets a little tired, and I have fallen in love with pots and urns and doing annuals in that. It's, it's that blank slate where you get to start from scratch with the, the shape and the color of the Absolutely. pot and the flowers, and you can move it around and you can nourish it just perfectly yeah. for that, for that. So I'm a, I love, well, I really enjoy doing that. You know, that and I think it, it's art, right? It's an art form, it absolutely so. is. And I, I was talking to Johnny about this j just recently, about how even the community garden, when we have that cleanup day, it's just creating this blank canvas, if you will, yes. for um, you know what I would liken as the artists, which would be like the volunteers, the committee members, the growers who come in and, and 
create that canvas and then you know the art being the fruits vegetables awesome. herbs you know all the things that grow and then it, you it becomes living art i think you know as as it grows and flourishes and you know i would encourage everyone to come out mid august through mid september and see it you know and it's Ooh. all its glory and bloomed and flourishing and, and, and going slowly over to the other side because that's also so beautiful what we have is a winter interest in our gardens and the twists and the turns and if you're cleaning your perennial garden you're taking out more dead <laughs> than you're leaving live it's it's an amazing culling of, of the yes. cycle of all of the beauty that, that it provides yeah. do you find it important to uh, plant flowers near your gardens for uh, the purpose of pollinization is is that is that a thing do we do we tend to recommend that? I mean, it's absolutely a thing, and I would recommend it. You know, however, that's not you know per se why I do it or why I would think some of our growers do. But you know, it ab absolutely you know speaks to that, and it's it's a wonderful idea. And um, you know, I know we had talked about you know beehives and things of those nature oh, at the garden. Yeah. You know, however, we you know we, we can't do that. All we're the we're implications. right, oh, yeah. right. We're very <laughs> we're incredibly <laughs> limited in what we can do. But it was yeah. you know just like this wonderful idea, like to do that. You know, for that particular reason, for pollinization, because it's so incredibly important. So you know, I yeah, would gotta... you know I would say that you know perhaps some do or maybe they don't. But regardless, I mean, it's a wonderful thing having those flowers there because it is serving that purpose, whether they know it or not. So. I I'm an old wife, so the old wife's tale was um, planting, um, was it, not geraniums, uh, the yellow the yellow and orange guys, marigolds. Marigolds yes. around your garden protected it from bugs or something? Yes. There, that, that, is that a true thing? Did Natural you, insect they? repellent, absolutely. Yes. 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 And, and we do encourage those, and there are, are a lot of those at the community garden. We are all organic. We are pesticide free as oh, well. Oh, very, yeah. Nice. And talking about the, those, uh, the, the future of the community garden, I know that there are initiatives to continue to spread this love for community gardening and to start other plots and gardens in different parts of Chicopee. Tell us about that and tell us about where, hey. where that's going. Yes, okay. and, you know, there is, that is an ongoing conversation. It will continue to be an ongoing conversation. You know, that was, you know, that was the vision, you know, initially with the committee was to have a community, a Chicopee Community Garden in every city park within the city. Um, so I do have great news in that the second community garden is under construction at, currently at Rivers Park. Um, set to be completed sometime over the summer, so stay tuned for more on that. Oh, How many beds will that have? Great. That is going to have similar to what we have now. It's going to be awesome. about 22. Great, great. I know that I just planted the seed for uh, a community garden at the Wisnowski Park. I know that the, com the, the Chicopee Cultural Council is also sponsoring a project by one of our grantees, uh, Gabriel Martinez, He's uh, hosting a revitalization project at Wisnowski Park that involves painting uh, the water park and, and painting the core. So because there's going to be work happening there, I, I thought about what if this happened in Wisnowski Park as well? So I know that there are plans to uh, create these community gardens all over. Absolutely, and, and I would say keep that conversation going. You know, I can't think of a better spot than Wisnowski Park, and I would love to see that happen. It's a beautiful, beautiful, uh, intimate park. And it's also a food desert. Yes. We were talking about food insecurity. Yes. How do you feel that food insecurity has been impacted by the community garden? You know, I, I absolutely think that there has been impact there for sure. I mean, you know, we're providing the green growing space for our neighbors, you know, to come and grow their own food and not have to rely on um, perhaps public transit or trying to arrange for rides or, you know, a way to get to an actual grocery store, you know, versus, um, you know, a convenience store, um, you know, definitely addressing food insecurity. You know, even looking at it per se, if someone happens to be walking to the garden and they're hungry, you know, they have here is the opportunity to, you know, have graze. a strawberry, mm -hmm. graze, you know, take yeah. whatever you need. I know that Lorraine's Kitchen has had a plot there. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and and the, the, the fruits of that labor feed the, the community. Um, and I know that there have been growers 
that donate their crops. They just enjoy the process of planting and they donate their crops as well to uh, these food pantries, among them Lorraine's Kitchen. So I can see how it directly, uh, you know, connects to all these other smaller projects that are looking to feed the community. Uh, and they it serves do. a great purpose. Absolutely. We're, the community garden is very fortunate to have a, a community partner like Lorraine's who do have a plot on a yearly basis. And then growers who simply for the love of growing and donate all of their crops to the soup kitchen. So it's the community partnerships are tremendous and they're such an asset to the community garden. Yeah. So there's that aspect and that, that is a perfection. And there's also the new um, farmer's market. Yes, right. The farmer's market is a... Uh, uh, an initiative by TDI and um, the Chigabee Chamber of Commerce. So every Thursday at 12 o'clock, you can go to... Starting at... Uh, it's starting at 12 o'clock, yeah. Uh, you can go to the uh, plaza right in front of the old library by the city hall, and there'll be live music, There's there'll be food trucks, and there'll be vendors with fresh produce. So that's going to be happening. Uh, it already started, but, but I think that the active vendors will start attending in June 1st. So we're excited about that, and you should be joining us. That's an opportunity, right, as well for, sure, for people some people to... Sure, people right there. Absolutely, yep. Yep. absolutely. Addressing the, the food insecurity. Yes, yep. yes. And um, there's also Center Park. Center Park is another project uh, brought by forward by TDI and the Chigabee Chamber of Commerce and it's going to be located on Center Street near the Shell gas station. Um, and it's also a venue. Look out for activities. Yeah, look yeah. out for activities there. And, and it's a venue where yeah. things like this can be promoted as well. Does Absolutely. the committee um, raise, fundraise, or how do how you get, you had that $5,000 grant, how do you keep it going forward? And, and we do, you? we do fundraise, and um, we were very fortunate to have our first fundraiser. It was back in the summer of 2019. It was actually June 1st, 2019. Um, we were unable to do the same fundraiser this past summer due to COVID, um, and we hope to get back at it. So we had an incredibly successful event. We did a cocktails and yoga, um, in the park and so not necessarily in the park but we did um we outdoors. had we had an outdoors <laughs> hour-long guided yoga in the the green space on the back side of the community or on the other side of the fence um, and we had an incredible turnout we probably had 30 to 35 participants and we had the hour-long yoga session and then after that everyone was invited to come to a local establishment and um, have a cocktail, um, a garden themed cocktail um, that the community garden committee, we, we had a lot of fun. We developed um, the cocktails. It was a lot of fun, but it was tremendous, tremendously successful. It was widely received and we really hope to do that again. Yes. So please follow the Chicopee Community Garden in, in, on Facebook so that you can be aware of these type of fundraisers when they happen and also so that you can learn how to get involved with volunteer opportunities, whether it's cleaning, planting, or if you're interested in a plot. Make sure that you follow the Chicopee Community Garden Initiative. And I want to thank you, Kim, for joining us today thank here you. in Spotlight Pleasure. on the Arts. Thank you, thank you so much for having me. The pleasure was mine. Thank you so much and thank you both for all that you do for the community. Thank you. Definitely flowers are a form of art, like Love. Deb says, but also you are art. So get involved with the community. Let's make Chickabee beautiful. And this is all for today's episode. Thank you. Thank you. Deb, thank you, Kim. <laughs> thank you. That has been Spotlight on the Arts and I'll see you next time.